Amen. So in 2 Peter chapter 1, I want to look at verse 12 there. It says, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye knew them, and be established in, a, in the present truth. And the title of the sermon is, Be Established. Be Established. You know, as we as Christians, as God's people, we should seek to be established in certain ways. You know, and, and there's certain, you know, spiritual uh, practices, certain spiritual habits that should just be established for us, that things that we should establish in our lives so that we can grow but also even physically, you know, we need to be established when it comes to even our location. Okay, so those are two of the things that I think that are important that we as Christians and really just as human beings in general uh, understand, that it's important to be established. You know, we need to learn to put our roots down at some point. And this is something that I've been thinking about, uh, you know, recently just because of the fact that, you know, I'm somebody who moved a great distance to go to a church. You know, and people today would look at that and say, well, that's crazy. Why would you you know, move across your family across the country and just to go to a church. You know, a lot of people, when you tell them that, they kind of scoff at that, they mock at that, they don't understand that. But, you know, but they'll move to go to a college. You know, they'll move to go for a job. They'll move just because they like the weather somewhere else. They'll move for all these other reasons. And everyone thinks, oh, that's perfectly normal. But as you just tell them, oh, I moved because I want to be part of a good church, they, they look at you like you, you know, all of a sudden another head sprouted on top of your body or something like that. Like you got something on your face. You know, but to us, you know, those that, understand the things of Christ that are saved. To us, that makes perfect sense. You know, it makes less sense to us when we see somebody that would just move for a job. You know, they'd move and they would just go to some other location and, and not be in church. They would say, well, I'm going to leave this great church and just go somewhere because the weather's better. I'm just going to go there because I can make more money. Now, look, if you can have your cake and eat it too. If you can go and do those things, that's what you want to do. You know, as long as you have a good church, I'm all for that, Okay. But I think, you know, and I'm talking, you know, right out of the gate here, just talking about the physical aspect of this, the, you know, the locality that we as God's people need to be established. So I think sometimes we get this idea that, you know, we're just, we can just wander through life, that it doesn't, you know, life can just take us wherever it wants to. But really what Paul is praying here for these people in 2 Peter is that they would be established in the present truth. You know, we should understand what the present truth, there is a spiritual reality that we live in. You know, that we're going to see God one day, that we have this one life to serve Christ. And because of that, because of that present truth, you know, we should be established in some things in our lives. There's some things in our life that we just need to nail down as Christians, whether it be where we live, but even more importantly, what we do, okay? Now, of course, you know, when people move or people have to go places in, for the will of God, that's perfectly normal, right? That does happen. Where, If you would, go over to Hebrews chapter 11. You know, we could talk about, you know, Abraham. Abraham is a great example of somebody that had to move to be in the will of God. You know, and that's, that's kind of the other side of this coin. You know, some people, in order to be established, they do have to pick up stakes and, and move. They do have to, you know, uh, uh, you know, root themselves up and go to another location. You know, when it, it, we moved out here because we wanted to be a part of a good church. You know, and again, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, that's kind of what brought this whole sermon about, is the fact, you know, that I've been thinking about this, that, you know, we moved out here eight years ago, and... And that, you know, we, we kind of got into an apartment, you know, got into a one-bedroom apartment, and a few months later, we got into a two-bedroom apartment, and then that's where we lived for seven years. And we spent one year in a house in Mesa, and then finally we moved down here. But, you know, that entire time, we could say, oh, we're, we're living in Phoenix, but, you know, a lot of things were up in the air. You know, we didn't know exactly what was going to happen, if I was going to go into the ministry. You know, I'm not trying to talk about myself, but I'm just trying to make this point, you know, that, that when you're in limbo in life, you know, there's a certain sense of, uns uh, of, of insecurity. You know, and I think it's real important, you know, for families and especially for ladies, you know, whether they admit it or not, or whether they'll even say it or not, that they need to be established. They need to have that sense of security, you know, and again, my wife's not here. I, I try not to mention her from the pulpit too much. I'm not, I never want to embarrass her or anything like that, you know, and this is no fault of her own. This is perfectly natural. But, you know, when a lady, uh, my wife, you know, she's never complained or anything, but I, you know, just because the way women are, uh, they want to be rooted. They want to be established. They want to know this is where I'm going to live. This is where I'm going to, you know, raise my family. They don't want to wonder from day to day what's going to happen year to year. Are we going to be here next year? Are we going to be in the same dwelling place? Are you going to pull up stakes and pull me all the way back to Michigan and go start a church in Detroit? You know, which I almost did. Okay. And, you know, I'm kind of preaching this too to let everyone here know in this church that, you know, we're here. You know, we have decided to be established in Tucson. And, you know, I didn't really realize how much that was hanging over my head, you know, not knowing where I was going, having no certain dwelling place, and how much stress that I was actually probably bringing into my life 
until I actually did go ahead and pull the trigger and got established and said, you know what, I'm going to Tucson. I'm going to start that church in Tucson. We're going we're gonna to be committed to the work in Tucson. You know, I'm going to be here, God willing, until the day I die. You know, you're going to bury me in this town. You know, once I made that decision, allowed myself to be established, it was like this weight, this, this weight that I didn't even see, didn't even know was in my life, was kind of lifted. You know, and same for my wife. And, 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 you know, Sundays, you know how, everyone remembers how it was before we moved down here on Sundays. You came in here, you thought I climbed out of a trash can, you know, and I was, I had green fur, I was Oscar the Grouch, right? You know, but I was doing all that driving, wasn't getting very good sleep and all that, so on and so forth. But a lot of it was just the, this, this, the stress of it. And I remember even after we got moved in, you know, it seemed like I, I would wake up Sundays just out of force of habit would be a stressful day. I'm like, but I'm only 20 minutes away. Why am I so stressed out about Sundays? It was just, I realized that it just, that's the way it had been for in the last two, whatever years. And then it kind of dawned on me, man, just the fact that I decided to be established to just put my root down somewhere, it just lifted this burden off of, uh, you know, our lives. It just took this weight away. The stress was just gone. So that's kind of what brought this sermon about. And I think that's an important truth that, you know, we as God's people should seek to be established. You know, whether it's in a, in a physical location, you know, but more importantly, spiritually, there are certain things that we should establish in our lives. And again, I know I'm kind of ranting here, but Abraham, you know, he was one that did have to move to be in the will of God, didn't he? Look at verse 8 of Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. Now, I don't think it meant like he was just, he didn't know what direction he was going to go or where it was he was headed. He just, he didn't know that place. You know, he left and he went in to the promised land and God led him through the promised land and that whole region, not knowing where he went. He didn't know that area. He was a stranger. He was a pilgrim, right? He wasn't familiar with it. It was new surroundings, but he had to go and do that in order to do what? In order to be in the will of God. You know, we get contacted all the time by people who just say, oh, there's no good church in my area which sometimes I highly doubt, but I'm sure it's out there. What, what they mean is there's no church that's good enough for me, okay? There's plenty of churches in this country where people could go to and thrive and live for the Lord, and, and you know, even though they're not post-trib, pre-wrath, even though they're Zionist, you know, there's some things you'd probably have to go in and hold your nose in some services and just get over it. There's some things you're just going to have to put up with, but you could go there and you could succeed as a Christian. So how do you know that? Oh, I don't know, because I did it for 11 years because I know other people who've done it for decades. You know, our pastor did that for years. Uh, you know, pastor, other pastors I could point to went to old IFB churches and thrived as Christians. So, you know, when people write us or reach out to us or contact us and say, oh, I just can't go to this church because they're Zionist. Well, I went to a church that was called Zion Baptist Church, okay? And they were pro-Israel and they were everything else. But you know what? I learned a lot of good things in that church. And, and some people just need to, you know, suck it up and go to church. But here's the thing. Let's say that is the case. Let's say you're just in an area, there's just no church, they're all preaching some false gospel, they're all using the wrong Bible, you know, they just, you can't find anywhere, everything is just hours away. Well, you know what? You need to be like Abraham then. And they'll say, oh, you're my online pastor, pastor. And it's like, no, he's not. You know, it's great to have the preaching, but that, we, I mean, do you think we consider online listeners church members? Because they're not. You know, to be a church member, you have to be at the physical church. That's what makes you a church member, Right to be a part of that body. You know, you can't do that virtually. Now, I'm not saying you can't glean from online preaching. Obviously, you can. But do you want to be in a church? You have to actually go to that church. And, you know, people say, well, I, I just can't find a good church. Well, you know what? You need to be like Abraham then. You need to go find one. You need to be a part of it. You know, a lot of times people might say, you know, it might just be like an, a matter of moving a half hour in one direction. Maybe you just need to move an hour away. Maybe you don't need to move all 2,000 miles like I did. Maybe you don't need to move to the other side of the country like I did. Maybe you don't have to try to go to the other side of the world like other people have done. You know, it might just be a matter of just going an hour away. And But people, you know, you tell them that, and, they, and that just ruffles their feathers. They just get all worked up about that. Oh, I couldn't do that. You expect me to just like, well, didn't Jesus do that for you? I mean, didn't Jesus leave glory? Didn't Jesus leave heaven? Didn't he condescend to men of low estate? Didn't he come from heaven and leave a lot behind that he had going for him to come down here and do God's will? You know, it just might be that if we want to be in God's will, if we want to be established, we might have to actually do what other men have done in the past, what Christ did for us, and move physically, okay? <clears throat> That's what Abraham did. He was dwelling, uh, he sojourned, it says there in verse 9, in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles, tents. You know, we, we treat that like it's something fun. You know, we're going to go camping. Hey, let's get a tent and go sleep in it. You know, <laughs> somehow that's fun because we don't do it. You know, Abraham would look at you like, what? You've got a nice, warm, soft bed. 
and a secure home with doors that lock and, and a roof over your head and air conditioning. What are you doing out here dwelling in tents, right? We, that's not, his, that, this isn't a, a camping trip. This is how he lived his whole life, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac. He's raising families in tents. And Jacob, the heirs of the same promise, for he looked for a city which had foundations and whose builder and maker is God. You know, it really shouldn't matter where we end up. You know, it really shouldn't matter because we all understand that eventually we're all going to end up where? In heaven, in glory. So if we have to move somewhere to be in God's will, so be it. It's worth it in the long run. Abraham so, is literally, you know, an example of somebody who literally stepped out in faith. You know, we, take, we, use, that, we use that statement all the time. You got to step out in faith, brother. You know, Abraham literally did that. He literally stepped out in faith in the very, you know, very literal sense. But, and this is a very admirable quality. You know, we would look at Abraham and what he did, and we would say, man, what a, what a mighty man of God. And truly he was, okay? And, and uh, you know, we should be willing to do the same if needed, if needed. If we had to make that kind of a move, we should be willing to do that, to be in the will of God, okay? But some people, you know, they, they need to move to be physically in God's will. Some people need to just stay put to be God, in God's will. Some people, they just need to stay put and quit just moving around and going here and going there and trying this and trying that and going to different places. You know, God, because here's the thing. You can accomplish God's will in a lot of places, can't you? Because here's the thing. The where of God's will is more important. Or excuse me, the what of God's will is more important than the where of God's will. You know, and that's a saying that you've heard probably from other preachers in pulpits. That's, a, that's you know, a kind of a cliche thing, but it's very true. You know, that's something that I've thought about. You know, I put quite a bit of thought into you know, in this last year, thinking about, you know, I had options. I could go here and I could do this. I could go here and I could do that. And I was told, you know what? You could go to either one of those places, but it's what you do there that is what matters. So, you know, why not stay in sunny Arizona and away from the liberal, you know, hellhole that is Michigan, right? <laughs> Especially when you're talking eastern, southeastern Michigan. You might as well be in Ohio. Ugh. <clears throat> no offense to anybody from Ohio. But, um, uh, you know, that's the thing. You know, we don't want to just say, well, I got to be like Abraham, just constantly wandering, constantly look, going from church to church, from town to town. At some point, we just needed to pick a place, put down our roots, and stay there, and what? Be established in the present truth. Look at verse 32, because I want to point out something. You know, we, we might look at Abraham and say, oh, how noble, you know, and people, and I've known people like this in the past where they you know, they, they act like it's, uh, you know, some spiritual, uh, you know, great spiritual attribute that they have that they just kind of, you know, drift through life. That they just, you know, they go from this place to this place to this place. And look, it, it, people are free to do that. People can do that. But at some point, people need to put down roots, okay? Here's the thing. When Abraham was doing this, and others have done this in the past, it was, it was a form of persecution. You know, wandering about was not something that was sought after. It was something that came because of the fact that they were being persecuted, okay? Look at verse 32, and what shall I say more? For the time shall fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson, of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. So these, are these all things we would want? Really? <laughs> I don't want any of those things. I don't want the edge of the sword. I mean, maybe you want it. Go ahead. You can have it. But I'm not looking. Look, if it comes to me, I'll take it. But this isn't something I want for my life. You know, I'm not getting down on my knees and praying, God, you know, please help me to have to escape the edge of the sword. You know, please help me to be persecuted with lions. Let me be thrown to lions, Lord. You know, these are not things that I want. But if they came, you know, we should be willing to accept it, of course. Women received their dead, raised to life, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Look, that's not, those aren't things I'm looking for in the Christian life. Now, if they come, so be it. You know, I, you know like, just like Jesus prayed in the garden, take this cup from me, nevertheless, thy will be done. Okay? But that's not something I desire for my life. I'm not looking to be stoned, verse 37, sawn asunder, tempted, slain with the sword. You know, but here's the thing. I don't want to wander about either. That's what it says there. And they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. They wandered in deserts, verse 38, and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. You know, we, it, we, we're stuck with the desert part here, right? Let's not add wandering to that. You know, let's, let's be established in the desert. Let's not wander in the desert, okay? Look at verse uh, 13. It says there, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, embraced them and confessed that what they were what? 
strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. <clears throat> so we are strangers. We are pilgrims. You know, we already are, just by uh, virtue of the fact that we're Christians, are wandering through this world, spiritually speaking. You know, we're never going to be fully at home in this world. But that's no reason for us to just never feel at home in any one, one place. You know, there should come a time in our life we say, this is home. This is where I live. You know, I understand there's un, you know, unforeseen circumstances. There's, there's extenuating circumstances that we do have to, you know, uh, be uprooted and move and be reestablished in places. I get that. But we should all desire, if possible, to just put down roots somewhere. And just, you know, be happy with the fact that, and, and understand that we already are wanderers. We already are strangers. We already are pilgrims, spiritually speaking. And we're never going to be fully at home in this world. We spiritually remain strangers. If you would, go over, you're still in Hebrews, uh, go over to Hebrews 13. That's what Peter called us, right? He said that we were strangers and pilgrims. <clears throat> we spiritually remain them. We wander as strangers in this world spiritually. It is God that we, uh, we are established. Uh, excuse me. It is God's will, but that we are established, though. And I want to move away from this idea of being established physically, okay? Because I think most people get that. Most people understand. That's not a hard thing to understand. In fact, that's really the easiest thing to do, isn't it? Isn't it easy to just say, well, I'm going to buy a house here. This is where I'm going to live. I'm going to buy a grave plot. You're going to bury me here. This is where I live now. I'm going to get familiar with these roads. I mean, that's all pretty easy to do, right? But it's being established spiritually, that's really the more difficult thing. And that's really what I want to focus on a little bit more this, this evening. People need to be established spiritually. I know I had, a, had you go to Hebrews 13, but go to Isaiah 37. Isaiah 37. You know, one area about being established spiritually uh, that some people struggle with is salvation. And don't we see a lot of that? People who are just kind of dabbling in different religions. You know, I'm a Buddhist for a while. Now I'm a, I'm a Hindu for a while. You know, I'm into Eastern mysticism for a while. I tried, you know, some, uh, some you know, whatever. They become these, what, spiritual connoisseurs. They try a little bit of this, they try a little bit of that. They're never established. They never say, well, let me find out what the truth is and just believe that. And they're going to, what, wander right into hell is what they're going to do. Okay? So that's one. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. But we need to be established spiritually. Yeah, yeah, we need to be established physically. We need to put down roots somewhere and say, this is home. And, and there's a lot of benefits that come with that. I don't want to spend all night on that because really the more important thing, no matter where you end up or how many times you have to move, you need to be established spiritually more than anything. Because if you're established spiritually, it doesn't matter where you go or how often, how often you have to move somewhere else. If you're established spiritually, you're going to thrive, okay? <clears throat> we have to be rooted in order to grow. You say, why is it so important that we be established or be rooted, right? Because in order to grow, you have to be rooted. There are things in the Christian life you must nail down if you're going to grow to where it's not even a question anymore. It's not a matter of circumstance. It's not a matter if everything works out, I'll do this. It's just a matter of fact. It's just, this is the way it is. I'm established in this. This is what I do, period. And nothing else changes that. <clears throat> you have to be rooted. Why? So that you can grow, okay? I mean, that's how it works with, you know, plant life, right? They have to put down the roots before they can send up everything else and absorb the sun and bear fruit. That's kind of the example that God uses there in Isaiah chapter 37. Look at verse 30. He says in verse 30 of Isaiah 37, And this shall be a sign unto thee, ye shall eat this year such as groweth of itself, and the second year that which springeth up of the same. And in the third year sow ye, and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruit thereof. That is not the verse I wanted. Go over to uh, Hosea chapter 14. Hosea chapter 14. Hosea chapter number 14. The Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 19, this is the one I wanted, verse 30, and the remnant that has escaped of the house of Judah shall yet take root downward and bear fruit upward. What are they going to do? They're going to take root downward and bear fruit upward. You notice the, the sequence of events there? The fruit comes after the root, right? It's not they're going to bear fruit and then go ahead and establish roots. And you know, a lot of Christians, they live their life like this. You say, why am, I, why am I not growing? Why am I not being fruitful? Because you haven't established things in your life. There aren't, you haven't put down some roots, spiritually speaking. There aren't things that are just are grounded and established in your life. And if that's the case, you're never going to grow spiritually. You're just going to be stagnant. <clears throat> that was the case for that God, that was his will for the house of Judah. That they what? Take root downward and, and bear fruit upward. 
We're familiar with Psalm 1, right? Blessed is the man, that one, that, 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 that dwelleth not in the, that walketh not in the counsel of the godly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth and see the scornful, but his delight in his law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We all know this is a real familiar passage. You know, it says that that man, you know, he's going to be what? A tree that is planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his own season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, people really like the sound of that, don't they? They like the idea that whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Wouldn't that be great that anything that I do for God is just going to bloom and prosper? My life is going to bring forth fruit. My leaf isn't going to wither, you know, because I'm planted by the rivers of water. But here's the thing. It's that planting by the rivers of water that makes all that possible. It's what? The fact that he was rooted. You're there and uh, where did I have you go? Hosea 14. It says in Hosea 14, verse 4, I will heal, the, heal their backslidings. I will love them freely, for mine anger is turned away from him. I will be as the dew unto Israel, and he shall grow as a lily, and do what? And cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread. Again, notice the sequence there. When do the branches come? Before or after the roots? It's after the roots. You know, he's cast forth his roots, and then his branches are spread. You know, if we want to spread forth our branches, if we want to be like that man that is planted by the rivers of water, we have to be what? Be established. You have to be rooted somewhere, spiritually speaking. Go over to Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah 17, which is a very, you know, uh, it's a very similar passage to Psalms chapter 1. But notice that he gets a little bit more specific about what it is that brings forth the fruit in a person's life. What is it that's going to make you fruitful as a Christian? Being established in some things. You know, and people flounder spiritually their whole Christian life, and it's a shame because they don't need to do it. And they just, you know, if you're waking up and wondering if you're going to go to church, you know, you have not been established in that area. If you're waking up and wondering if you're going to pray and read your Bible and go soul, you haven't been established. To be established in something just means that it's done, it's settled, it's built. Think about a building, right? You see these old buildings all the time. They have that one stone in the corner, established, 1830, whatever. You know, they, they, they built that building. They put that stone saying, this building is going to be here for a very long time. We've set this stone in place knowing that we're building the rest of this building. It's established. You don't go to that building wondering, is it going to be there tomorrow? Is it going to be there the next day? No, that building has been established. It's been built. The foundation has been laid. It's established. That's what we need in our Christian life. We, there's things in our lives that just have to be nailed down. Okay, And I, and I know this is nothing new. I know this isn't you know, some groundbreaking sermon. And this probably isn't the most entertaining sermon. But this is a truth that people have to get. This is a truth that people have to understand if they're going to bear life, uh, fruit in their Christian life. They have to understand it. And it seems like these simple truths are the ones that people struggle with the most. These are the ones that people just, they, they, they flounder, they waver on these things. And what they end up doing is they never end up being rooted, uh, rooted and growing spiritually. Look at Jeremiah 17 where I had you turn verse 7. Blessed is the man. Boy, that sounds familiar. Psalm 1, doesn't it? Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is the, the Lord is. For he shall be a tree planted by the waters. And that sounds just like Psalms chapter 1. <laughs> that spreadeth out her roots. And you know, it said in Psalms 1, that he shall be a tree planted by the rivers of water. Right, that he's just planted, that the water's there. You know, obviously we understand that trees have root systems. But, you know, he specifically points it out in Jeremiah 17. That spreadeth out her roots by the river. What is it that's going to make that true tree, uh, you know, fruitful? What's going to make it that whatsoever he doeth prospers? What's going to make it strong? What's going to give it a strong trunk, strong limbs? What's going to make it fruitful? What's going to make it be able to withstand the storms that come against it? You know, when I remember I lived down in, in St. Croix, you would see these mahogany trees that had stood for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. And they were, it was a real rare type of mahogany because most mahogany has a very straight grain. But when you, when you, this West Indian mahogany is what they called it. I don't know if we just made up that term or what, but it was from the West Indies. You know, when they would, it was illegal to cut them down, first of all, but they would eventually, after hundreds and hundreds of years of withstanding all of these hurricanes, I mean, hurricanes that would come through and just wipe out cities, just wipe out little towns, just wipe out homes, and just destroy everything, these mahogany trees would stand storm after storm after storm. Why? Because of their root system. And eventually they would fall down and they had a really unique, uh, wood pattern because that storm would come through and it would twist a branch and then it would just put all these swirls in the grain. It would make it, you know, you know, mahogany is real straight grain. It'd have all these swirls and knots and it was really interesting, but it was the storms that made it that way. 
right? But, but what allowed that to happen? What gave it that look? What made it so desirable was the fact that it was able to withstand the storms. And what made it withstand the storms? Its roots, right? If we're going to be the type of Christian that's going to withstand the storms that are going to come, you know, we have to be what? Founded upon the rock. We have to do the sayings of the word of God. We have to actually, you know, not just be hearers of the word, but doers of them. We have to establish these things. <clears throat> and people struggle with this. You know, the proof is, you know, a lot of, a lot of faces, you'll see, you know, you always have your core group, but then it's, you, know, you have your other people that, you know, they're kind of hit and miss when it comes to church. You know, those people, they need to get rooted. They need to get established. They need to get rooted in the house of God. They need to, they need to settle that once and for all in their hearts, that I'm going to be in the, or I'm going to be in church every time the doors are open. And I get it, you know, people, things come up, people can't make it, whatever, you know, but we should, we should not be hit and miss with church. We should, that should be something that should be established. That's like Christianity 101. That's like a main root that you need to put down in your Christian life and just establish. <clears throat> he said there that this guy was going to be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. Her, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall uh, cease from yielding fruit. So where is the nutrition? Where is the sustenance for this tree coming from, from the root system? You know, it's not reaching out, trying to, 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 to bring in the, the nutrition it needs, the nutrients that it needs from an outside source, from, you know, the, the things which are above ground. It's that which comes from the roots, the roots that have been established. So we need to be rooted. We need to be rooted physically. You know, God doesn't want us just wandering around in life. We need to pick a place and live there and say, I'm committed, Okay. We don't want to be wandering physically. Again, the what of God's will is more important than the where, but we also want to be rooted spiritually. That's really the emphasis. Go to Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter number 3. The Bible says in Colossians 2, I'll read you from Ephesians 3. Or you go to Ephesians 3, I'll read from Colossians 2. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him. You know, we should desire to be built up in him. You know, we should desire to grow in Christ, but you know what comes first? Being rooted. You know, you're never going to be built up in Christ until some things are established in your life and rooted. It's not even a question anymore. It's just, it's there. I mean, you look at some massive tree, right? With this huge, you know, just bows reaching out, vines draping off of it, just this giant tree. Do you wonder if there's a root system there? Because I go, I wonder if it has any roots at all. No, you know they're there because of how evident, they're evident because of how strong that tree has become. It's been built up. Why? Because it's been rooted. It's the same way in our lives. If we want to be built up in Christ, we have to be rooted and built up in him. And what? Established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein and thanksgiving. When we want to abound, you need to be established. You want to be built up, you need to be rooted. It's just this principle. Ephesians chapter three, where you are, look at verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, they would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Doesn't that sound nice? I mean, that's what we should want for our lives, to be what? To be strengthened with his might, with might by his spirit in the inner man. You know, that's something I desire for my life, to be strengthened, you know, by his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being what? Rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ with passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with the, all the fullness of God. And that's a pretty strong prayer. I mean, if you're praying that for somebody, you must really care about that person. That's a, that's a spiritual prayer. That's not just, you know, Help them not get sick, and you know this is some this is some deep praying. This is the fervent prayer of a righteous man right here. But what's he praying there? He's saying that they would be what rooted and grounded in love. You know, we should desire to be rooted. We should want to be rooted because that's what's going to make us uh, flourish. You know, we should be focused on that inward condition rather than our outward circumstance. You know, people get so obsessed with the outward today. They have to have these perfect ideal circumstances on the outward. They have to have, you know, everything in their life, all their circumstances have to be just so in order for them to feel, you know, like they have, what, the fullness of God or whatever, to be at peace. But really, the Bible's showing us it's the inward man that matters. You know, if I have the inward man established, if I have the inward man grooted and, and grounded, it, my outward circumstance isn't going to matter. It's not going to affect me. 
I'm going to have peace because I've been rooted and grounded in what? In the love of God, in the love of Christ. We should be focused more on our inward condition than our outward circumstances. Because when we are rooted, you know, and we're established in the Lord, our physical location, you know, it's really just a matter of preference, isn't it? And again, I'm not against people who, you know, if people want, we've had it happen, and that's fine, and I've done it, you know, guilty. I, I could have moved anywhere. And I said, well, it's a matter of preference. There's a good church there in Arizona. I really didn't know a lot about Arizona at the time. You know, granted, I knew they had the Grand Canyon. Didn't realize it was this hot. Okay. <laughs> Even though everyone warned me. We were rooming for Michigan. And I was like, oh, we're going to Phoenix, man. It's hot there. It's like, duh. <laughs> right? I still would have come here, knowing all, even knowing all that. But it was a matter of preference, right? There was other places I could have gone. You know, now today there's all these other churches. People, it's like they can, they, they can pick and choose. They can choose their church, you know, if they want to be in a new IFB church by what kind of climate they like. You know, do you like the, the, the misty Pacific Northwest? You know, new IFB's got you covered. Do you like the Golden Coast of California? You got options. You got Sacramento. You got L.A. You know, do you, do you like, uh, you know, the green, lush, humid uh, region of Atlanta? Covered. You can go out there. You can go out east. And I'm trying to think of other places, right? Well, what about Arizona or Texas? Eh, never mind. No, i <laughs> Some people love it. You know, hey, it's not for me. I was out in Oklahoma in that area. I said, man, it's, I loved how green it was. All that green grass, I mean, it was, it was just lush and vibrant. Everything was just growing. It was beautiful, but it comes at a price. Let me tell you, brother, that you think you got it bad at 100 and whatever, that humidity out there, whew. What am I saying? You know, is that, you know, our outward circumstances, where we end up, that's just preference. What really matters is being established in the inward man. Establish these things spiritually. Be established in what? Your Bible, right? Again, very basic sermon tonight. But these are the things that, that matter the most that people need to nail down and be established in if they're going to grow as Christians. If this church is going to grow, you know, it needs, it needs a membership that is rooted, that is rooted in the things of God, that knows the Bible, that understands the Bible, that, that is rooted in the work of God, that is committed to it. That is, that's what's going to establish this church. You know, it's not just a one-man show. It's not one guy that's going to, yeah, there's one guy leading it, you know what? For this church to grow and for this church to reach its community, it's going to take a, 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 a body of believers who are what? Who are established in these basic truths, like Bible reading. You know, Bible reading is something that we should be established in because that's what's going to grow us, isn't it? That's what's going to cause us to grow. Go over to Proverbs or go over to Psalms chapter 104. I'm sorry. You know what? Go to Psalm 92. Psalm 92. I'm gonna. I'm kind of keeping it short tonight because we got that trip. <clears throat> we need to be established in our Bible reading, okay? Because God, you want to grow spiritually, it's in the Bible. That, that's where you're gonna find it. You can listen to all the preaching you want, but if you're not reading your Bible on a daily basis, you're not gonna grow. You're not gonna grow. You're you, yeah. You'll you'll acquire knowledge. You'll acquire understanding. You'll have an intellectual understanding of doctrine. You might grasp certain concepts that other people don't, but you know, you know, it's the Bible reading that's going to keep you humble. It's the Bible reading that's going to where God is going to speak to you and deal with you and show you things. We need to be established in our Bible reading. God is going to grow those who are established in the source, those that go for the Bible. The Bible says the trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted. You know, God wants us to be like that, full of sap, full of nutrition, full of strength. It's in the Bible. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved, the Bible says. Psalms 119, it says, Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. We need to be established in the word. And it says there that he should be, he's praying that he would establish his word unto his servant who is what? Devoted to thy fear. You see, it's a two-way street with God. It's a two-way street. We should. We want God to, you know, establish His Word to us. We want to be able to stand on the promises of God. We want to be able to claim the promises of God. Well, you know what? You need to be devoted to His fear. Then, you know, we can't just expect God all to be, you know, a one-way relationship where God we just take, take, and take. You know, God expects us to be devoted to Him, to be devoted to His fear. We need to be established in our Bible reading. What about this? Be established in your church. You know, and this is really, I know I've already touched on this, but you know, look at Psalm ninety-two, verse twelve. 
the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. Now, we know something about that, don't we, here? Because we have palm trees. And, and, you know, they grow a bit big and tall. They withstand storms. They're cool to look at, right? Maybe that's not a, something we share in common with them. But, you know, they're, they're, they, they flourish. You know, what about like the date palm? I mean, it's, in some places it's a nuisance. They, they're fruitful. They're just dropping those things. People can use them. He shall grow like, the cedar, like a cedar in Lebanon. You know, strong. The righteous shall flourish. He shall grow. How are they going to grow? How are they going to flourish? Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Those that be, uh, 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 be planted in the house of the Lord. Look, we should be established in church. And I know I already mentioned this, but I'm going to mention it again. We got to be, and I know I'm preaching to the choir because, you know, this is a Sunday night service. And it's all the, the Sunday morning glories that need this, right? But, they, you know, hopefully they're going to watch it online and, and, and sweat a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> or hopefully, you know, it breaks through and they say, you know what? He's right. Okay? And, and why? Why should they do that? So, that? so that they can flourish. They that be planted in the house of the Lord. You know, those that go to church, you know, they're going to flourish. But where are they going to flourish? In the courts of our God. You know, the people that are established in church, that are committed to the, to the work of God, that are committed to, you know, doing God's will here in this world, they're the ones that are going to flourish in the courts of our God. You know, there's going to be a day when God rewards his servants, when God, you know, uh, rewards them, crowns them, exalts them, you know, gives them positions. You know, it's not going to be the guy who's hit and miss at church that's going to get all that. You know, the guy who was not established in the house of the Lord, he's not going to flourish in the courts of God. But the people that are established in the house of God, they are going to flourish in the courts of our God. Because they're there getting the, the preaching, they're doing the Bible reading, they're doing the sowing, they're doing the work, they're committed, they're established in the work of God. That's who God is going to reward. It says in verse 14, they shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Now we've got that latter half down, don't we? You got the fat part down, right? But it says that they shall bring forth fruit in old age. You know, I mean, I'm a young man, but I'm already thinking about what is, what am I gonna, where am I gonna be? What am I gonna be doing in 10 years, 20 years? You know, actually, let me rephrase that. I don't wonder. I'm, I'm hoping, God willing, I'm gonna still be doing what I'm doing right now. That I'm gonna still be established in the courts of our God. I'm gonna still be established, you know, in the word of God. I'm still gonna be planted by the rivers of water so that even in my old age, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be what? Bringing forth fruit. I'm going to be fat and flourishing even as an old man. Still working and serving God. Still, you know, having wisdom from God. Still being able to flourish in the house of God, in the courts of God. <clears throat> so you need to be established is what I'm preaching tonight. Be established in your life. Be established physically. Put down some roots. Say, this is where I live whether it's here or some other place, but we need to do that. You know, and more importantly than that, we need to be established, what, spiritually. We need to establish ourselves spiritually. And there's a lot of other things we could talk about, you know, about prayer, about Bible reading, about the church attendance, about the soul winning, a lot of other things we could talk about. But be established in your life. Go to James chapter 5. We're going to wrap up there in James chapter number 5. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, where we were this morning, ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. You know, we should look at what direction we're heading in. We should look at our feet. We should establish, look, ponder our path and ask ourselves, where is my life taking me? What are the things that I'm doing? Where is it going to lead? Where is it taking me? Is it taking me to the place where I'm going to be in my old age, flourishing, or is it going to take me to a place where in my old age, I'm weak and useless for God? Maybe washed up, backslidden. We have to ponder the paths of our feet and do what? And let our ways be established. There just needs to come a time where you just say, I read my Bible every day. I, I pray every day. I go soul winning. I go to church. That's just who I am. And, and be established. And I know, again, those are real basic things. But that's the root system. That's the roots that, that allow everything else to grow in our lives. And without that, you know, we're going to just blow right over the next storm that comes. The Bible says, through wisdom is in house building, and by understanding it is established. And we talked about this morning, where do we find wisdom? Where do we find understanding? In the word of God. We need to be established in our life. 
You know, we should be, you know, and let me be a little more practical for you tonight, too. Let me give you some practical application to leave with. You need to be established in a career. You should be established in a career. You know, people who do well in a career are people who, who pick one and stick with it. You know, this is something I, I kind of had to learn the hard way a little bit. You know, I could see my wife is like, every two years, it seems like you just change jobs and change jobs and change jobs. You know, it wasn't until I picked one and just stuck with it that I, in time, I actually, you know, started to make a decent income. You know, after I actually picked a, a certain career and said, this is what I do now. You know, and you need to do that. You know, that's good advice for young people or even older people if they haven't done this. You know, pick a career and stick with it. You know, now I understand sometimes we got to make changes, whatever. You know, there's extenuating circumstances, but you know what? The exception proves the rule. When people pick a career and stick with it, that's when they tend to do best, right? That's just practical advice. <clears throat> You know, pick a career. Uh, how about this? Pick a spouse. You know, people flounder about marriage for years and years and years. You know, at some point, you just need to find a wife, you know, and if you can stand each other, <laughs> you know what I mean, and, and get married, you know. You know, I understand that some people, they have the ability to, you know, to not be married. You know, that's a gift that is given, but that's the very rare group of people. You know, it's, and, by, and Paul said it is better to marry than to burn. You know, being established with, with a spouse, you know, get married and establish that. That's, that's something, you know, because some of these things are major life decisions, but you know what you need to do? You need to get them behind you because <laughs> there's a lot of other things in life that you have to take on. There's a lot of other responsibilities that have to be addressed. And I understand, you know, a career and, and marriage and these things that there's a lot, they, they bring a lot of decision-making with them too. But you know, we shouldn't just flounder in these areas. What am I going to do for a job? I don't know. Just years go by. When am I going to get married? Oh, I don't know. Just years go by. You should make these things happen. You should go after them. Be established. Be established in a career. You know, this is the practical application, right? This isn't just the spiritual stuff. And with a spouse, you know, getting married. How about in a church? You know, again, I, I know I'm going on and on about that. But be established in a church. Say, this is my church. You know, identify with the people of God. Say, this is my church. Not, you know, that's a church I go to. Or when I go to church, I go to the land and they say, no, that's my church. I'm established in there. That's where I belong. And be established with what? A community. You know, be established and committed to the people of Tucson. That's what we're here to do. You know, I, I'm established to, you know, that map back there. I'm committed to it. You know, I want, I, I'm, I've put down a root and said, I'm going to fill out that map. You know, Pastor Anderson the other day, he was talking about, you know, we got this goal of knocking every door in the state of Arizona. And we're talking about the different areas. I don't know if it was in a sermon or not, but he's like, but, you know, we won't... Tucson's taken care of. You know, they're, they're up in Tempe. They're not going to, well, what are we going to do about Tucson? Because we're it. You know, they already know, oh, we got one, a stat. We got a, what, a church established there. We've got a root put down in Tucson. We're going to, uh, you know, build that root up, give it time, and it's going to take over. It's going to spread. And it's going to reach that whole area. Be established in a church and be established and committed to a community. Look at James chapter 5, verse 7. It says in uh, verse 7, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Look at verse 8. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts. You know, being established, it's what's going to give us the ability to be what? Patient. To wait for what? That rain. It's going to see us through those droughts, it's going to see us through those dry seasons. You know, there's a lot of plant life here in this, in this, in where we live that goes many, many, many months sometimes without rain or very little rain. How is it able to do that? Because it has roots that go down. It finds another source. That's what we need to do. We need to be patient. We need to be established. We need to put down those roots so that we can see ourselves through those more difficult times. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. You know, whatever, wherever we choose to be established and whatever we choose to be established, we know this one thing, that we are going to be what? Permanently established with the Lord. Permanently. There's going to come a day where it's we're in heaven and that's it. We're not going to have, it's not like he's like, okay, round two. I'm sending you back. Try that again. We don't, we don't believe that. It is a point on a man wants to die and after this, the judgment. You know, we, we, we only go through this life once. And if we, under, we need to understand that if we're going to be established permanently in heaven, once we're there, we're there, that's it. Then we should think about what are we doing in this life? We should 
ponder the paths of our feet and let all our ways be established. Because once we're there, that's it. You know, you know only, only what's done in this life for Christ is what's going to last. So that's the message. You know, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Because there's coming a time when that's it. We're going to be in heaven and everything that we've, we're going to have done for God will have been done. Let's go ahead and pray.